Hi, this is Kurbis from Budisa Technologies. We are out here in Franklin near Kokstad on a private farm. Uh, our purpose is to fell all the invasive aliens on this farm. And what we do is after harvesting we prepare the stacks. Um, these stacks are one by one by one meter. Um, and each stack uh, takes approximately 250 to 300 kilograms of, of wood. Um, after we've prepared them into the stack, they get uh, placed into the kiln and the kiln is lit. Or it takes two or three uh, stacks uh, per burn. And uh, that is the purpose of our operation here at the moment. In this example, the invasive alien species um, in South Africa, Caesia mianzai, um, has been cleared six weeks in advance of the paralyzing teens. Um, this type of jungle wattle is, is not good for anything but charcoal and firewood. Um, we prepare the stacks uh, for the burn cycles as follows. Uh, the logs are cut into one meter lengths by the chainsaw operator and the stackers then stacks the, the timber into neat piles measuring one by one by one meter uh, in a crisscross manner. Uh, due to the airspace factor it is difficult to accurately estimate the exact volume or weight uh, of each stack uh, but the stacks not only serve as feedstock points uh, from which from which the, the, the feed the kilns but it's also a way to measure the, the speed at which the, the felling operation is done or to give the felling team a, a task which is measurable um, one should take to measure the one by one meter stacks with a tape measure and remain within the specification occasionally weighing the logs uh, in random stacks to get better estimates of volumes being achieved. Uh, the stumps are also to be treated with a suitable herbicide uh, one hour after harvesting. Before you do your first burn, you first have to position the kiln in the right place. Um, always ensure the kiln is placed on a, on a, on a flat surface near the feedstock. Um, use picks and spades to level the area in question to get the grass off, um, even if it's on steep terrain. Try and get it as level as possible. Um, remove all stones, any flammable material uh, in a radius of at least three, 3 meters around the kiln. Very important. When you order your kiln, it will arrive in three sections, uh, and including a lid. Please use gloves when handling the tight sections. They have burrs that can cut you. Use a socket wrench, the number 17 socket and the 17 ring spanner. You also need a hammer and a spade. Pretty simple, it takes less than 30 minutes to assemble. But follow the following guidelines, as the lid needs to sit flush after assembly. Find a level area. If it's on grass, level out the area by removing the grass with a spade and even some soil if necessary. You can even use a spirit level if possible if the terrain is very rough. Place all three plates upright to form a drum and then line them up as close as possible. Now make mini assemblies of the bolts and the nuts. The bolt, the washer, the spring washer and the nut. You need 48, but there should be some spare ones. Start fitting the bolts and nuts. Undo the nut and remove the washer and spring washer. Slide the bolt through both plates and adhere the washer, spring washer and nut again. After all 48 assemblies have been fitted, slightly tighten the top nut at one of the joints. Place a peg or stick broomstick under the section of the kiln that is the lowest of the two joining sheets. Hammer carefully but with force on the higher section uh, with a spade to get it down and in line with the other section. If it goes too low, move the stick and place it on the adjoining section and hammer the opposite side until both are in line. Looking down from the top, also make sure that one section is not more inward than the other. In other words, that the arc from one section continues through to the next. The bottom will automatically align, 
but have someone on the inside hammer at sections that are protruding inward to get sections in line with the arc of the drum. Tighten all the bolts. The kiln is now complete. Firing procedure. Have the following at hand for this step. Paraffin mixed with petrol, matches, gloves, fork, spade and some polypropylene bags. The foam procedure varies but most commonly used method is dig four holes and remove flammable material in a radius of about 3 to 5 meters. Prepare some kindling with twigs and light the pile. Roll the kiln into place and position over the holes. Fill with wood at random in a manner that would maximize the space inside the kiln. Keep on adding wood to a level approximately one meter above the kiln. It will sag once or twice over the next two and a half hours. Close the primary air holes at the base of the kiln and seal the lid with mud. drum is then carefully tipped over and the charcoal is bagged into polypropylene bags. The charcoal is further sieved in field with the use of a portable sieve. Typically charcoal pieces smaller than 15 to 20 millimeters is unsuitable for the barbecue charcoal market. The served charcoal is bagged, weighed and stitched, ready for the marketplace. <laughs> 